Hi, this aircraft that I'm going to show you today is called an ASG 29 ES. It's made by Alexander Schleicher in uh, Germany. This thing came over here about six years ago and I've been flying it for the last five. So it's, it's a great ship. It's the number one racing ship in the uh, world and uh, it's a lot of fun to fly. But let me talk to you about the cockpit. As you can see, we only have one seat in the aircraft. It's really nice because nobody can tell you I want to land. When you want to land, you can land. It's pretty tiny, but once you get in it, you're kind of laying down and it's very comfortable for long flights. Average flight in this aircraft is about four to five hours. During a normal race, it's about four to five hours. If you're anything less than about six foot four, you can fit into the aircraft. The seat is actually forward about halfway, so it could go back a little ways, and also the rudder pedals can slide forward probably another seven inches. So there's still a lot of uh, space in the cockpit for a taller person. The aircraft has, just like a, a normal aircraft, it's got an airspeed indicator here, an altimeter here. We have two Varios, now a Vario is a, uh, a device that tells you what the air mass is doing. So as the air is going up, it tells you what the air is doing, not exactly what the aircraft is doing. I've got this set up so that uh, when I'm flying along, if it says the air mass is going up at 300 feet a minute, I can start a turn and the aircraft will go up at 300 feet a minute. So it gives you that uh, little bit of information to make a decision do I need to turn and climb or do I keep going straight? The wings are 18 meters long, which is a class in racing, which means the wings are roughly 57 feet wingspan and they have trailing edge flapperons. So not only do they provide you roll control, but the flaps go down and in racing gliders, the flaps actually go up. So when the flaps come up, you're actually flattening the camber of the wing so it's more efficient at high speed flight. Just like when you're landing in a powered aircraft, you lower the flaps to increase the camber to make the aircraft handle better at slower air speeds. We also have these boxes here, our die brakes, because this aircraft will only go down one foot for every foot horizontally we travel. They come up and provide drag when we're in the landing phase. So if we're a little bit high, we can sit there, increase the die brakes to give you more drag so we can still land on the spot on the runway that we desire. Or if you're a little bit low, you could bring the die brakes in and it allows the aircraft to glide at a shallower angle. So if you become a little bit low, you have a way to recover. Since we don't have a motor that we use all the time. However, speaking about a motor, this aircraft does have a motor. Underneath the, uh, the solar panels, there's two doors. If we ever find ourselves in an issue where we want to uh, not land, we have a motor that comes up. It's just a, a two cycle engine that has 24 horsepower, like a big lawnmower engine the prop stops or starts and then uh, we can climb away from the ground. Once we're away from the ground again, we can shut the engine down, retract the motor, go back to soaring. So we only carry 10 liters of fuel and this airplane is, uh, it's been flying for five years and it only has eight hours of uh, time on the engine. So we don't actually start the engine very much at all. Having the engine gives you the ability not to land in a field uh, most times in Florida, we have lots of airports we can land in. It's not a problem at all. But you do find yourself every once in a while having to land in a field. Uh, it takes us about uh, 20 minutes to take this aircraft apart and putting it into its trailer uh, when your crew comes to pick you up. Winglets have been around for a long time. We have them in sailplanes because the wing is more efficient. And if you uh, look around the ramp at an airline terminal, you'll find that most of the airliners have winglets now also. What they do is they take the airflow along the wing, smooth it out towards the wingtip so it creates a little bit less drag. So for an airliner, you're actually getting about uh, one to 2% uh, less fuel consumption. So you're actually uh, not burning as much fuel. And for us in gliders, we have less drag which means the aircraft can glide further 
without having to gain altitude. When you, uh, when you get your rating, obviously you're flying a training glider, you're not actually flying a high performance racing ship, but there are several ways that you can go from a trainer to a racing ship. And you can see this aircraft that's coming out of the uh, hangar right now, it's actually owned by 12 pilots and they have three aircraft. And it costs less than a car to buy into the membership and you fly it for free. All you have to do is pay for the tow. So it's your aircraft, you paid for it, but you get to use it with 12 other guys. So flying from that aircraft to this aircraft is a very easy transition. And from a trainer to that aircraft is very simple too. So it's very easy to go from a trainer to a high performance racing ship. We do training from uh, initial flying, initial pilot's license, all the way up to high performance uh, racing to improve your, your score in a contest. So we do cross country training. So we take you up in a two seat glider or if you're in a single seater, we'll fly a single seater, we'll go as a pair and we'll talk about a flight, we'll follow each other and when we get back, we uh, debrief the flight and tell you what we did right and what we could do better. The whole thing is to make your, uh, make your flying experience better and make you a much safer pilot. So owning something like this, which is a top of the line racing ship, these aircraft cost between $220,000, $240,000. And the operating cost for the aircraft, when you take a look at an annual for a powered aircraft, it's very expensive. For this aircraft, it's $250 and it just takes a couple of hours because we take the airplane completely apart, the mechanic inspects it, and then we put it back together again and it's easy. It takes a, a very short period of time. For insurance on this uh, aircraft, you're talking about uh, $2,500 a year for full hull insurance plus liability. But if you're gonna buy an aircraft that's um, uh, uh, an older aircraft, let's say a 15 year aircraft, you can buy one for about $60,000. The insurance on that would be about $1,800. And when you're flying, all you need is a tow and a tow here costs $50. So if you fly for four or five hours, which is about my average flight in this aircraft, you're looking at about $10 an hour direct cost flying it. So it's much cheaper than flying a powered aircraft. This aircraft is a high performance racing ship. What we use it for is to, for enjoyment. We'll uh, fly this aircraft uh, around Florida and uh, Southern Georgia on a daily routine. Uh, and then we also go to about seven uh, competitions a year in it. Uh, it's, it's a fun aircraft. When you go to a competition, you see all your friends. It's a great time. It's like a festival. And you can get into this by coming to Seminole Lake Glider Port down in Claremont, Florida. You can reach us at our website, www.soarfl.com. And our telephone number is 352-394. 5450. So come on down and fly with us.